Yeah. So um, last class, we uh, looked at um, the gift of tongues, uh, the benefits of the gift of tongues, um, the, the, the gift of interpretation of tongues. And we uh, looked at how it um, how that gift operates and uh, what are the you know how it benefits us personally and also uh, you know uh, for the congregation right so um and we also yeah we started by looking at uh, the gift of prophecy we looked at some old testament examples and we also looked at um, studied some of the new testament examples and in that we we you know in the new testament uh, uh, examples we looked at how uh, some uh, there were some people who prophesied uh, just before you know at the time of Jesus birth during the time when, um, when he was a child and um, and also we looked at uh, the early church and the, the gift of prophecy was very much there there were prophets um, who were ministering in the early church in Jerusalem in Antioch um, and so uh, the gift of prophecy very much uh, uh, you know, very much available for us today as a church, as a New Testament church, right? Um, so we we also saw what prophecy does. Okay, so um, can anyone just put it on the chat or tell you know what does the simple gift of prophecy? Um, what does it accomplish? What does it bring about? Anyone? What is uh, the simple gift of prophecy as we know it? What does it what does it accomplish? Edification, exhortation, comfort. Yeah. So you know there is strength. There is a, there is a building up. There is encouragement, strength, encouragement, and comfort. Right. Consolation. So um, so which is which is really important. Which is really necessary for every believer. And uh, so. Uh, either individually or collectively as a church, you know, this is this is for us, right? And the Holy Spirit who knows those who need strength, the Holy Spirit who knows those who need the encouragement and uh, those who need comforting, right? He inspires, right? He inspires the believer to take that message or to carry out or do an act of uh, you know or do something so that it brings about. Uh, edification, exhortation, and comfort, right? And we um, we see that in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, right? Uh, edification, exhortation, and comfort, 1 Corinthians 14, and uh, uh, verse 3, right? He who prophesies, speaks. So that's a really, um, you know, in a, in a very um, uh, concise manner, if you want to explain and say, okay, what does prophecy actually bring about? What does it accomplish? 1 Corinthians 14, 3 is... You know, is the place to go. It clear says very clearly, it brings about these three aspects. Okay, now prophecy also has the element of correction, has the element of foretelling, you know, uh, what is in the future, and so on. So, um, so that is that is also you know part of uh, the prophetic ministry, and um, we also saw that there are different levels, right, um, or different ways in which prophecy operates, right? It's one is the simple gift of prophecy that every believer is, uh, you know, is called upon or encouraged to walk in. Um, and what is that? That is to, um, that is which, just to speak forth or to, 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 to do or to carry out what God inspires, what Holy Spirit inspires, right? What Holy Spirit leads us. Uh, what the Holy Spirit leads us and inspire us uh, us to speak or to do, right? So that which is there for every believer, which is there for all believers. Then we also see that there are believers in the body of Christ, placed in the body of Christ, and for them, um, the role and the function is to bring about uh, or to prophesy or to bring edification maybe, to the to the body of Christ. So so the, so God works in them. Uh, consistently in that, so they are what what we call as prophesying believers. Right? They are not um, prophets, but prophesying believers, and consistently they walk in it. And then we also see the ministry gift, what we see in Ephesians four eleven and twelve, the ministry gift of the prophet. And uh, here also it is it is for a few, right? or, or for some, whom the Lord will call and say, okay, this is what you are called to walk in you know this is what you need to be doing this is your calling and the calling of the 
or the ministry gift of the prophet. So we see you know several uh, different levels. Okay, so um, and we also looked at what prophecy does. You know, uh, uh, in the in the sense, yes, edification, exhortation, and comfort. But you know, when uh, you know, what are the other other uh, things that prophecy can actually accomplish? You know, the, to establish the call of God, to confirm the uh, the, uh, the word of God. God, what God has already spoken, um, in a practical, in practical ways, uh, direction, and uh, and also uh, to enable us to fight the good fight of faith. You know, just like uh, Timothy would instruct, uh, sorry, Paul would instruct Timothy and say, by these prophecies, prophecies that you would wage the good warfare. And right? First Timothy one and verse eighteen. So, so it's important for us to understand how is this prophecy received. Right, so how is prophecy received? So similarly, like for all the gifts, the, the what we see is that the one main foundation, the basic uh, you know foundation, is that prophecy is um, uh, prophecy or any other gifts are received or perceived through the spiritual uh, senses, right? Through the spiritual senses, and the gods speak to us, speaks to us in our spirit. So we not, we need to be keen, we need to be sharp in the inner man in order to receive or perceive uh, what uh, what God is placing in our hearts right and uh, uh, so just like how our five natural physical senses work uh, we need to perceive from God what he is uh, putting in our spirit perceive is to just to you know, become aware of or to um, to be conscious of something uh, to realize it right to understand it so um, and of course, it involves the element of discerning, checking, testing, and and then carrying it out, either receiving it or you know sometimes maybe just if you're not sure, just putting it there for some time, putting it on the bench for some time, and then uh, and when God gives the confirmation, to take it forward, right? Okay, so let's look at uh, how prophecy is received. Um, if if you look at uh, um, you know, Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. Okay. Uh, God says, I have also, it's, let me just put it on the notes. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can see that it's coming up. Okay, um, so we see that God uses uh, to, uh, our spiritual senses to communicate to our spiritual senses, and we also see in Scripture that God uses visions or visual things or symbols, uh, pictures uh, or moving pictures, you know, to communicate a message, right? And uh, so our responsibility is to receive it, to understand it, to interpret it, and to be obedient to it. Okay, so uh, we see this, you know, this scripture, Hosea 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions. I have given symbols through the witness of the prophets. So the Lord is saying, you know, I have spoken by the prophets. So these are the ones who, uh, who are my spokespersons. Uh, who are my mouthpieces, right? And and the Lord says that you know, I have multiplied visions or increased visions, and also He says that I have communicated or given symbols through the witness of the prophets. So visions and symbols. Okay. Um, another scripture that we can look at, a couple of other verses that we can look at is, uh, you know, uh, let me just put it here. Um, it's in Numbers, Numbers twelve. And verses five through eight. Let me uh, read that out. Numbers twelve, five to eight. Okay. So Numbers twelve says this. Um, then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they went forward. Then he said, "Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I the Lord." Make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him um, in a dream. Not so with 
my Moses, my servant Moses, he is faithful in all my house. I speak to him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings, and he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So, you know, the context is that uh, Aaron and Miriam are, you know, complaining or speaking against uh, Moses, and then, and the Lord actually rebukes them, corrects them, and in doing so, he talks about the prophetic, uh, uh, the process um, by which he communicates, or the means that he uses, uh, or the Lord um, uh, uses in order to communicate to his prophets. Okay, so this is what he says. Um, uh, I, you know, if there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. So you see, you know, vision being mentioned there. And he says, I speak to him in a dream. So these are, you know, methods that Lord the God, uh, our God uses to speak. Right? Uh, dream. Then he also says, uh, but to Moses, I speak to him face to face. So we see God speaking face to face and it's uh, it says yeah even plainly meaning simple words simple instructions um, nothing complex and uh, and he also says even plainly and not in dark sayings you know? so which means dark sayings could be like uh, symbols or riddles or uh, you know puzzles something that needs interpretation right uh, like jose um, so what we see here so um so this could be, you know, like even in uh, Hosea 12, we see the, uh, you know, we see the same thing. Um, let's look at uh, Hosea 12 through symbols, right? Something that is symbolic, um, something that is, uh, you know, dark sayings need, uh, you know, should not, be, should not be interpreted as something dark, something, um, you know, something that is not of the light. So, you know, normally we, Consider that to be uh, something that refers to the, you know, the uh, spiritual realm, which is not of God, right? We uh, something satanic or something that's powers of darkness. No, um, here, you know, it's it's a, when it's when you say dark saying it's something that is hidden that is, that needs to be, you know, revealed by as the spirit of God, which that needs to be, you know, um, unraveled. Right? It's something that needs to be um, uh, explained, maybe interpreted. So symbols are that, right? Symbols, uh, they carry meanings, right? They carry, you have to um, understand symbols because they they carry uh, meanings. Like, for example, you know, we load, use a lot of emojis, right? And when you're texting, you load, and each emoji is an expression, right? It carries a meaning, a smiley, you know, is and uh, you know uh, maybe uh, you know uh, uh, an emoji with hearts and the eyes right you know uh, you know what it conveys you know that you love something or something that people had put or some picture you just you know looking at it with eyes of love you look you love it so much so a symbol would uh, carry a meaning okay so um, so the Lord speaks in uh, in dark sayings or symbols right? um, another scripture similar to numbers 12 is also um num num numbers 24 okay. numbers 24 i'm just uh, sharing these scriptures because um we need to understand that it's you know when when god speaks uh, he uses all these means to speak to us and um, many times we we limit god and we say okay um, this is how he is or he cannot you know communicate in these ways but maybe the lord is just you know reaching out to us or communicating to us in in these ways and we're just not noticing it we're not taking note of it right um so uh like i uh, you know mentioned in in, in the uh, in the previous classes right we uh, we need to be mindful about the the word of god because the word of god the written word of god the bible is our foundation it's our reference point Okay. So that is, you know, these are the prophetic scriptures, and uh, we also, you know, uh, this is a reference point. We always fall back. We check against the Word of God, no matter you know what our experiences are. We, you know, we check against the Word of God, and um, uh, we check with the Spirit of God who dwells in us. Right? He dwells in us. So we we discern. We ask Him for you know for uh, confirmation. Right? 
Okay, so let's look at Numbers 24, verses 15 and 16. This is about the prophet Balaam. And um, so he took up his oracle and said, the utterance of Balaam, the son of Beor. Now we know that he um, he went astray, right? Um, but um, here he explains the the process of how he receives uh, uh, the message from God. Okay, this is what he says. Um, the utterance of Balaam, the son of Beor, and the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened. The utterance of him who hears the words of God and has the knowledge of the Most High and sees the vision of the Almighty who falls down with eyes wide open. Right? So eyes wide open, eyes are opened, uh, hearing the word of God and has the knowledge or revelation, knowledge, understanding of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty. So these are all, again, uh, you know, different ways by which God speaks. So, so when uh, when it comes to prophecy, and uh, you know, some of some of the other uh, gifts, we see that God speaks to us uh, in these ways as well, right? And uh, so we can, we can we receive from Him. He speaks to us in these ways. Okay, so simple process about pro for prophesying is to to pray. Okay, first of all to pray and to ask the Holy Spirit to give us a word of prophecy, to give us a prophetic word. Right? So we pray, we ask, we ask in faith, we ask expectantly. Right? So we know God is living; He's a living God. We know that God is a God who communicates. Because he's the one who speaks. And that's how 1 Corinthians 12, the chapter itself starts, that Paul doesn't want us to be ignorant of these spiritual gifts. And, and, and he also says, you know, your past life, when you were not believers, you were carried away by these idols who could not communicate. He says, by these dumb idols who could not communicate, but we have a God who speaks. And then he goes on to talk about the different gifts because God communicates through these gifts. Right? He manifests through these gifts. So, uh, so when we we desire, right, we come with expectation, uh, knowing that God will speak to us, um, and uh, He He releases His plans and purposes through us. Right. So even in a in a in a time when we are learning to prophesy, we can expect God to speak to us right? and say, God, you know, Lord, you give me a simple word. Give me a word of uh, you know encouragement. Give me a word of comfort. Give me a word something that that will strengthen um, the other person, strengthen the believer, right? So, so nothing wrong. We can ask, and uh, uh, and the Lord will, God will give a word. The Lord will speak, right? So we come expecting, knowing that He's a living God. Okay, so uh, so we do that. The second thing is to perceive. Okay, so um, perceive is again to become aware, to realize, to become conscious of uh, what God is saying. So we take time, we pray, we perceive. So, um, uh, and we perceive, you know, what is God putting in our hearts? You know, what is a still small voice? What is that impression? What is that information that's that's kind of, you know, just building up, just, just coming up, and it's like an overflow of a spring, um, right? And uh, a sense of knowing on the inside, okay, this is what I must be doing, or this is what I should say, right? A knowing on the inside. And then some things that, that are visual also, you know, God speaks in like picture, like we saw pictures, visions, like dreams, and so on. Of course, dreams, uh, you know, when we have, can we could have prophetic dreams when we are sleeping, and, uh, and then we have that dream. So, uh, uh, so when we, when we actively perceive, of course, dream. You know that doesn't come in here um, because it's something that we do when we are when we dream, dream when we are asleep, right? So, um, so some things that come up that God puts in our spirit. Okay, it it could be a word. You know, it could be as simple as a word, um, meaning it's it's uh, you know it's just a group of letters that make sense. It's a word. Okay, so. It could be a simple word, it could be a phrase, it could be a sentence, it could be a huge paragraph. No, the, it doesn't matter, right? Um, it, it, what matters is that it's inspired 
by the Holy Spirit. So therefore, it it is significant, right? Um, so maybe it's a it's a picture. It's a, sometimes even you know physical sensations because we know that the Lord who has created us, spirit, soul, and body, has the right. The one who touches our spirit also has a right to you know touch our bodies, you know, whether it's with healing or you know whether it's uh, something that is. Uh, you know, one thing that we see is that the Holy Spirit is is a paraclete, or is a paraclete, right? So He comes uh, alongside and literally, you know, puts His arm, arms around us. You know, that's the picture. You know, He comes alongside in order to comfort us, right? So when He comes alongside in order to comfort, when He comes alongside in order to maybe strengthen, we experience His touch. Right, and uh, we can experience it, experience this touch in our spirit. We can experience this touch, you know, even physically, right? So, so that's the thing. So we perceive, okay, this is what we we receive, and then we prophesy. Okay, so we discern: is it is it God speaking? And then, you know, we prophesy, share it, speak it out. Like prophetia means to speak forth. So we speak it out. Maybe share it with, uh, you know, with, the, with the, whoever we've been praying for, who we've been, we've been praying with. Um, and, you know, you you share that. And uh, and I find that you know some of the simple ways to to really learn about prophecy is you know if somebody's if there's somebody's birthday, and uh, you know, and you want to wish that person. And maybe you what you call and wish, or maybe you want to just send them a text message. Right? Pray, perceive, prophesy. You know, pray and perceive, uh, and ask the Lord, Lord, what is it? Um, like this Sunday, this happened. I was just, uh, uh, you know, as we were closing the service and just waiting on God, uh, asking the entire congregation, just wait on God. Just ask God what He's saying, what He's speaking, and you know, you receive for yourself. Let God move, minister. So um, I just found myself, you know, saying, "The Lord is your shade at your right hand." Uh, just that, you know, just a verse from Psalm ninety-one: "The Lord is your shade at your right hand." And and after the service, this person came and and uh, you know, and was sharing about how his wife was uh, healed from you know post covid uh, symptoms right she was having continuous cough for almost uh, 3 months i think uh, and uh, really literally she couldn't sleep at night and and um, how the lord healed her and uh, the healing happened when the family was praying and uh, just declaring psalm 91 over her life okay. psalm 91 and that sunday morning again was a you know reaffirmation she had come to church after all that you know, post-COVID thing, and she had come to church, attended service, and um, so the the husband was sharing, you know, into Psalm 91, and you know that was from Psalm 91 was was again a reiteration of the fact that because they were they were thinking, you know, should we go to church? You know, people are gathering. Should we? Uh, we just you know, she just come out of it and all that, but they decided to come anyway, and it was a, a you know, confirmation from God. Um, and I had no clue, like literally, you know, I just felt that I had to speak that phrase, speak that words out, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. And uh, for for them, it was a confirmation. So you see that, um, you know, um, yeah, so, that, uh, so when you're wishing people, maybe uh, you pray and you, and you perceive what God is putting in your heart and then and send it to them, text it to them. Um, you know, they don't have to know. Hey, this is a prophecy for you. <laughs> they don't need to know that. When we are learning to grow in, pro- in the prophetic, all that we have to do is we don't have to, you know, uh, kind of put a label on it and say, "Here's something that God spoke." No, just speak it. Okay, and and it'll find its mark, right? If it's uh, if it's if it's really inspired by God, it'll find its mark, and people will be blessed anyway. So, um, so that, that's one way, you know. That's normally um, uh, a good way to start, right? And also, when you're praying for people, when you're praying for people, the Lord puts certain things. You pray, and uh, and uh, and you know, you pray in that direction. Of course, you can always check with people and say, "Hey, you know, yesterday I was praying for you, and I prayed specifically for this." And then, yes, again, people would come back and say, you know, that was a need. That was something that we were 
you know that's uh, that that's something that we're waiting on god for and you know that made sense and so on so so that's uh, something we can do okay so we prophesy right now um so what we'll do now is uh, uh, uh just perceive you know uh, i just want to uh, for us to understand the or you know for us to really move into that perceiving process you know, praying and perceiving uh, it's important that we you know really practice that because we have a god who speaks we we know that he he desires to communicate to us so uh, it's just that we need to uh, we need to grow in this right um, and maybe some of us are already already doing that <clears throat> and moving in the prophetic wonderful right so um, for, for those of us who, who are yet to do that or maybe we are unsure you know can god speak to me can god speak through me well praise god <laughs> if you are a believer then you are a candidate right if you are a believer you can hear the voice of the shepherd and the shepherd wants to communicate the shepherd wants to uh, build up you know other lives build up our own lives right? the shepherd wants to do that so uh, you are a candidate if you are a believer then you are you qualify and right? if you are a believer you have the spirit of god dwelling in you um you are a sheep he is a shepherd so you qualify right so uh, no need to have all these you know am i worthy uh, do i need to become mature? am i mature enough um, am i righteous enough <laughs> right so uh, no need to have all those you know fears and questions uh, um, just put that aside well you have a god who loves you you have a god who who communicates um so he's your heavenly father he's your he's your loving shepherd and he's been leading you he's leading us you know all these years all these days and he wants to take you know uh, to your the relationship with him to a to a higher level right so yeah so let's take some time uh, and like we said you know you could you could just pray in the uh, pray in the spirit pray in tongues and uh, just want you to note down you know whatever uh, is showing you okay what you're perceiving in your spirit um so uh, be a little mindful of that you know you don't have to um, be paranoid about it you know, am i am i hearing am i not hearing no don't worry right just relax um the thing is not to be anxious not to be um, you know be preoccupied with that but really to pray and uh, to, to just worship god enjoy enjoy god enjoy talking to god enjoy opening up your heart to him just praising him worshiping him so maybe in a, in a known language you know you can just just praise him so let's do that let's do that for some time father god we we thank you lord that you're the god who speaks lord, what an amazing privilege that each one of us have um uh, all of us have got this privilege of hearing your voice father god and and yes um, the scripture declares uh, it's like the voice of many waters and yet it is a still small voice and um, yes father god we thank you that you speak in so many wonderful amazing ways father god and um and uh, we have this awesome privilege of uh, hear uh, hearing it and the and the responsibility of obeying we thank you father god we thank you we thank you yes lord uh, even right now we just want to praise you we just want to give you thanks and um, yes lord spend some time just uh, like Lord, even as we pray, as led by your Spirit, as we pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues, Lord, we we ask that you would speak to us. We ask that you would, um, Lord, show us things, God, that we do not know yet. Um, yes, Lord, we thank you. <clears throat> Let's just spend some time uh, just praying in tongues, right? Praying in the Spirit. Um, yeah, just go ahead. And since your mics are muted, um, just go ahead, pray out loud. <clears throat> and um, maybe if there's uh, if there was no privacy where you are seated right now um uh, you can just pray softly just between you and god right like just like how it says in corinthians you know you don't have to disturb your neighbor uh, disturb the household but uh, but you can just pray just between you and god right so let's uh, let's do that <laughs> Here, <laughs> 
want us to you know take some time to just um, just perceive right what is uh, god showing what is god uh, speaking to you right now and make a note of it just write it down <clears throat> um you know at this point i don't want you to analyze it um right just just note it down you know yeah Thank you, Father. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um so Divya shared something here. Um she, that she was reminded of this verse, Revelation one eight, I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Right. Okay. Anyone else? Um if you you know received something in your spirit, maybe a prompting, um, maybe you were reminded of someone, you know, as you were praying. Well, that is also a thing. So we're not I'm not going to analyze and judge and say, okay, that is wrong, you know, what you've heard was wrong. No, I'm not at this time, you know, we're not doing that. Just getting into the habit of, you know, what we are sensing in our spirit, right? Um if there was if was if there was nothing, no problem. Um Okay, uh, Zelitoli says she was reminded of the song Waymaker. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, it could be a song that comes to your spirit, right? A song that comes to your heart, um, or maybe just one line of that song. Oh, well, that is it. Make a note of it. Okay, anyone else? Um, anyone else? Okay, the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Psalm 121 and verse 6. Okay, that's from John. John Paul. Okay. Um, okay, I, 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 as I was praying, um, I just sensed, um, you know, something... Um, um, you know this. I just saw this picture, but I, and I just believe that it's for uh, you know it's for Jeffina, I think, Jeffina Augustine. Um, that uh, I just saw this picture of um, you know of Earth mover, <clears throat> and you know it has these tracks. You know this uh, this whole wheel thing. It has these tracks uh, for it for it to have a better grip on whatever kind of terrain it is. Right? If it's uh, if it's a slope, is able to uh, you know navigate that slope. Because it has those grips, and I just believe that you know God is doing that for you um, as a process. You know, maybe it's a challenge, or maybe some things that uh, that that you're finding it difficult to understand, or you know that the Lord is really undergirding uh, you and is able to kind of help you navigate that, navigate that challenge. What seems to be a hey, how can I actually? It seems so slippery. It seems so um, the terrain looks so. <clears throat> so intimidating, but you know, if you've seen those earth movers, <clears throat> it has that I don't know what you call it, maybe like a track kind of thing, and to grip and you know, to navigate that. I believe the Lord is you know, doing that in your life, so I just uh, kind of sense that. Okay, um, anyone, anyone else, anyone else, anyone else. 
Okay. Is that it? So, um, okay. So if you if you did not, um, so does that mean the the others did not really sense anything, or uh, you know, many times what happens is uh, you know, you're just saying you're just thinking that hey, it was just me, right? It was just my thoughts. It was just my imagination. So I'm not going to put share it here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now I want to ask you this question: What you know, if you have something like that, it, uh, I'm not sure if it was God, but I think it was just my thought or my imagination. Right? I want you to share that. Right? If you're saying, okay, this is my thought. This thought crossed my mind. Uh, I'm not sure if this was God. Okay. So anybody like that? I see many people here, right? So Blessing, Sid Ken Robert, Paul, Leah Lama. Priya Cherry and Nanita, George, Shia, Ribika, Jafina, Lyndon, Rosalind, Nicholson, Lubega, Aradhana. So all you guys, you know, <clears throat> if you okay, you had a thought. It it need not be scripture. It need not be uh, quote unquote spiritual, right? But you have this thought, you have this picture. Um I'd like you to share that as well. Okay, so because we're not discerning, I mean, right now we're not really saying, discern, judging it. Um, so I'd like you to share that. Anyone? Maybe you were reminded of some person, you were reminded of something. Priya, you saw Riva, okay, right. Anyone else? <clears throat> You saw a light. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So normally, uh, Priya, um, when you pray, do you see rivers or with the, you know? Okay. You saw a river. You saw a vessel with a long beak. Um, okay. I think Nikki. I remember a friend in Bangalore, so thought I would talk to him after that, after class. Okay. Okay. Right. And Anita saw a light. So what color was it, Anita? Any idea? Was it just a bright light? Did you notice the color? Did it... Um, just asking, you know, just so that um, something that you notice. Bright light. Okay. Good. Anyone else? <clears throat> Okay, if you if you can't text, let's say you're walking around or something, you can just unmute and speak, right? What is it that you did a thought cross your mind when you prayed? Okay. Absolutely fine, right? Sometimes there's nothing. It is it is absolutely okay. You know, sometimes we're praying for people and uh, uh, you just say, okay, God, you speak to me. There's, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. So you just, you know, you just pray, you know, a general prayer of, you know, blessing that person or giving thanks to that person, uh, thanks to God for that person. So absolutely, okay, no problem, right? Okay, so, um, uh, so just wanted to, and so, so you see that, you know, there, there's something that happened when you specifically said God, you speak and we are expecting him to speak and we know that he speaks in all these ways right um scripture prompting thoughts um we know he's a god who speaks and um you know we we receive all this in our spirit and so our responsibility you know is of course to discern Okay, now that's the second part of it. Okay, what discern, interpret, uh, find out what does it mean, and uh, so that it can make sense to us. Right, but uh, many times we, you know, even this process of seeing or hearing, we sometimes um, negate that, right? negate, 
uh, either because of unbelief or you know because of a sense of unworthiness or whatever you know we, know, we negate that right um, so just want to encourage us to to make note of it you know when we are praying maybe when we are worshiping um, um, you know many people say oh, hey this is uh, this is like a new age satanic ways <laughs> you know it's what Satan does uh, well our God is much bigger there's no comparison right and when and the, the scripture is very clear when you ask him he knows how to give good gifts and specifically talking about the Holy Spirit the Lord Jesus said he knows how to give good gifts and we should never forget who he is. He is our heavenly father. Right? And and that scripture where we see about the, about asking and receiving, it's about the, uh, the comparison is, you know, uh, we, we ask and uh, even an earthly father will not give something substandard, right? will not give something that is harmful if somebody asks, you know, if the son asks for a bread or a fish, so how much more your heavenly father okay so yeah so that's the thing so we get into the habit of hearing listening okay then the next one is of course if something is symbolic it makes sense of it what does it what does it mean so who do you think is the best person to ask okay i felt god encouraging someone that god knows the end from the beginning okay so keep trusting him thank you divya right <clears throat> so who do you think is the best person to ask okay you receive some something yeah this person is, is to ask him the holy spirit who's the one who has spoken who's the one who has given so you ask him he will give the interpretation he will lead us back to his word right? back to his word and and you see references there you know about god um uh you know and some some are very uh, direct no when there's scripture there's no second guessing it yeah there, here's a word and god has given a word in a sense it's a verse it's a or a reference so we read it and we are encouraged and and maybe it's an instruction maybe it's just a word of comfort and saying you know you know i'm the alpha the and omega so and and a song like Waymaker, it's like okay it's again a confirmation um of who he is right it's uh, what he does what he will do um and uh, okay river you know we see several references uh, uh, about the river and the work of the holy spirit right uh, the, the holy spirit in a believer's life is like a spring that uh, about salvation it's like the, the work of the holy spirit in salvation it's like a spring uh that's uh and we see that in uh, uh john chapter four right uh i will look at it will become in a, in a spring sustaining it then john chapter seven we read about the river and it's particularly about the holy spirit and right? the lord jesus teaches about that john chapter seven so we see that um the river uh, he uh, you know referring to uh the work of the holy spirit so we see that so we can ask god god is it that that you're referring to that you're you know that you're uh, moving in me that you what what is it about the river right you can ask him okay vessel with a long beak um a long beak i'm not sure what you're referring to um so uh, i'm not too sure priya but you, yeah definitely um you can you can check with god lord what is it of course vessel again there's a scripture reference that we are you know vessels and if um, in his hands and we will be a vessel of honor you know obviously it's for a special purpose right a vessel with a long beak is for a special purpose like something that's poured out doesn't get spilled out and you know doesn't get wasted uh it it's specific so uh, for that purpose nothing is wasted so it's a specialized utensil right for a specific purpose so so Maybe it's for you. Maybe the Lord is saying, okay, I'm going to use you in a specific area. And you saw the river. The river is the Holy Spirit. And then, you know, as I as I move out of you, as I pour, you know, flow out of you, it's for a specific purpose. You know, it's going to be very focused, a specialized area maybe. Uh, and I'm going to use you to minister, to be a blessing, right? So I'm going to pour a vessel. Right? The vessel left refers to us. And 
you know what's being poured out of us the work of god right so um yeah so anita said uh, bright light yeah uh, uh, we know that the presence of god um god himself is referred to as light so you know the work of his work in our lives um then right so uh, nicholson said was reminded of a friend in bangalore so yeah so definitely talk to him uh maybe there's something that god wants uh, maybe he needs you know something that um, maybe an encouragement or uh, okay um so nicholson can do that okay it's like a long spoon which you use to feed kids yeah so that's it there you go so yeah so ask the lord pray through that right pray and ask god god what what more what else okay okay we'll take a break and then we'll come back and um, uh, we'll continue thank you